Okay, hello everybody. It's uh, two minutes to 11. This is our um, pre-webinar sound check. So if anyone's arrived early, welcome. Just bear with me while I make sure it's all going. Cool, I just had the thumbs up from the sound folks. So we're good. Uh, I'll let it go for two minutes, let everyone arrive on time. Uh, one thing uh, for you all to be aware of around the screen resolution, I'll repeat this a bit later. Um, the default setting for YouTube is a lower screen resolution, so you may not get the best quality initially. There's a little uh, gear icon at the bottom of the screen. If you click that and adjust the resolution to 720p, you'll see everything that we're sharing with you. Okay, there we go. It's just gone 11 o'clock, so I'm going to kick off. Um, this is very unusual. I'm uh, speaking to my computer. It's a, I guess it's a bit like being a radio DJ, and you just trust the people that are out there listening. But it looks like from our system, people are starting to log in. We have a fairly uh, decent-sized group today, so I'll just do some housekeeping to kick things off. Uh, first of all, my name is Jason Enor. I am the uh, managing director and co-founder of MyHR. Um, many of you probably know me. Um, I either met you or spoken to you on the phone at some stage. Our attendees today are a mix of existing clients, uh, trial members and partners. So it's a really nice combination of people. Uh, there is a um, question facility in the right of your screen next to the um, to the images that you're looking at. You can ask me questions there. I'll do my best to answer them all. And if I don't have time, I'll come back to you each personally. Uh, the broadcast is being recorded, so if you want to watch it later, you can, and we will probably edit parts of it and use them as tutorials as well. So the point of today, and this is the first one that we have done of these, if it goes well, we intend to make a bit more of a regular feature of them. And the, the reason is to really achieve two things. One, to get you all uh, better aware of our software and its features. Uh, we turned three a month ago. Uh, we have a client base now exceeding 400 across New Zealand with a few operating in Australia, Singapore, the UK, and uh, Vanuatu of all places. Um, we have recently released, as you've seen from our mail out version 2.0, which has some amazing features. And we've steadfastly maintained our position around creating simple to use software um, and not requiring training manuals. We're not fans of the 80 page training manual uh, that you have to read through to figure out how to use it. So we think MyHR is easy and intuitive, but these webinars are designed to actually help you get more out of it. Um, it's also coupled with some HR advice. That is fundamentally what we do and why we are different to anybody else in the market. We have cool HR software that we've built, but we also combine this with an advisory and consultancy service. We give you, as you know, uh, dedicated support and advice. So part of today, we'll just cover off some HR best practice as well. I will be moving the screen between this presentation that you can see and between uh, the, an actual software demo to show you some of the new features of MyHR. The plan is for this to run for about 30 minutes, maybe 45. Depends a bit on the uh, extent of the questions you ask and how long we go for. So the topics today, I'm just noticing a bit of a lag on the uh, YouTube channel, so I'll wait for the slide transition to catch up. First piece of technical feedback for our first ever live webinar. There we go. So the topics, um, obviously the introduction we've just taken care of. I'd like to start with a new features overview. So some of the new features in version 2.0, smart notes, our reminders function, uh, visible folders in the employee self-serve space, and the calendar function. 
We will then go into some more detail around performance reviews. I'll talk a bit about performance review best practice and how to establish a good performance review, and then we'll go into a system demo. We'll then look at the new leave management function in MyHR and look at how you can use that and how that relates to the calendar uh, and to the scheduling of leave and then eventually to um, the payroll interface. And lastly, there's time for questions if anybody has any. So what we'll do now initially is swap across to the software. We're going to be operating in an account uh, called Guy's DIY. Guy is uh, Guy Smiley and he runs a DIY company. Let's go have a look at him. Once again, we have the uh, screen lag occurring, so I'll just wait for YouTube to catch up to me and we can jump into Guy's DIY. So now we're logging in. Uh, most of you will have seen this screen before. Uh, you log in and land at what we call our launch pad. And here, uh, here it goes as that screen share is catching up. There it is, folks. So once again, just a reminder around that screen resolution, if it is fuzzy, hit the icon in the bottom of the screen, the little gear icon, and adjust your resolution to 720. So here we land, the launch pad is the, um, really the hub of everything. Everything can happen from the launch pad. You can launch into any activity. Um, and what I'd like to cover is some of these new features that we've, uh, we've launched with 2.0. The first one is our smart notes function. And what this allows you to do is to leave file notes on any employee, both positive and negative. And these are quite helpful for managing future performance reviews, uh, coming up with or reminding yourself of events that occurred earlier in the year, both positive and negative. Um, they can also be quite handy for disciplinary process. If there is a, uh, a performance history or a conduct or misconduct history that you want to um, capture, um, the, the key to these, and now we get out of the system for a minute and give you a bit of HR advice, is to make sure that you always adopt the mindset that this is all discoverable information. An employee under the Privacy Act is entitled to request their files in full at any time, and you are required to uh, provide them to them. So don't write anything silly in here and really just adopt the mentality that you apply when you send emails or when you uh, engage with social media. It's just electronic communication protocols. So for example, if somebody is underperforming, um, you want to detail what's happened and why in an objective way that could be potentially reviewed by them, as opposed to saying, I think Jason's a silly idiot and I want to dismiss him from my business. Uh, that is not really helpful. So there's a bit of advice around the use of smart notes. Let's see how the function works. So in the left, top left of the screen there under add, there is a function that says, or a link that says note. You click note, you search for the employee. And we're going to check Maxine Mills. And then we can leave a note. So let's say, for example, um, Maxine was 20 minutes late today. Okay, that is negative. There may be more detail there. It may have impacted a client meeting. There may be things that you want to add around whether or not she notified you of the lateness and those sorts of things. Uh, and then we tag it as late and click save. That is now automatically moved to Maxine's folder and it sits as part of her personnel. Uh, and it can only be viewed by those people who have access, those managers, that is, who have access to Maxine. So that's the Smart Notes feature. We'll touch on that again a bit later. The next one is the Reminders, and that is here in the central part of the launch pad. 
And we've established this reminders function. At the moment, these uh, reminders are set by us. So we get a lot of questions about can we customise reminders? We would like additional reminders around training certificates or birthdays. Um, that is coming as a part of future development. At the moment, you can see the reminders linked to some important events. So, for example, this top one regarding Pete Simmons relates to an employment agreement that is awaiting signatures, which is quite important, uh, particularly in terms of validity around trial period. Where there is an arrow, if you click on that arrow, it will actually take you to the action to perform. The next one you'll see Jane Buttons, her performance review was due on the 16th of May, and it's awaiting completion. Billy Beans has an outstanding leave request pending approval. It's for the 15th of May, so once again, this is late, and the system is reminding you of that lateness. Um, other reminders and notifications include things like employment anniversaries, the progress of a trial period. So you will get a reminder, for example, if somebody is 30 days into their trial period. And I believe we might have some here. Um, here we go, Claire, tester, 90-day trial period ends on the 1st of June. Donielle Star, 90-day trial period ends on the 31st of May. And there's one for Bob Boffin, his two-year anniversary on the 30th of May. So this reminders function is just really designed to keep you in touch with important events in your business. The next one on our sort of new features overview uh, relates to the inclusion now of what we call visible folders. And a visible folder is a folder that you can make visible to the employee in self-service. And this feature has been enabled, uh, as you probably know in the past, self-service was limited to the employment agreement and the performance review. Now, at your discretion, you can show folders to your staff. So if we go and have a look in Maxine Mills' file, just wait for that screen to catch up again. I see there's some chat going on in the right portal as well. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so Rachel at Pacific Discovery is asking, is 2.1 already in use for those of us who are clients or is it being rolled out at some future point? Um, and thanks, Sylvie, for replying. Uh, yeah, it is already in use. We just require, if you want to use our leave module in the calendar module, at the moment, we are the ones that activate that. And the reason we do that per client is because of some of the sensitivity around the traffic of lead. Uh, you may be well aware at the moment that the government are undertaking a pretty significant review um, because they've been unable to pay their own people uh, correctly when it comes to lead. Uh, that is both the police and the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. So um, we need to make sure that when you set up leave, it is done right. And initially, we'd like to hold your hand through that. As part of our service is to make sure that you are well looked after and protected. So here we are now in Maxine's file space. We can see that with Maxine, we are storing some ACC documents, her employment agreements, which you'll see next to that is a green note that says Maxine can see this folder, um, signed policies and trial period notes. Now let's just say you wanted to share these policies with Maxine and remind her of her obligations under those policies or at least allow her to view them and have access to them. You simply click on the folder. And then when the folder opens, there we go slow motion YouTube, you will see under signed policies, it says Maxine Mills cannot see this file, but we want her to. So we're going to click show. We had a note saying folder visibility is saved. And there is a new note saying Maxine can see this file. Now you can reverse that decision and hide it. Uh, and you can change that at any time. So Again, moving away from the system for a moment, it's not normal HR practice to share everything on a personnel file, and that is not because we like to be, um, I guess, dishonest or deceitful or hide information from employees. Um, it's just not really what you do, I guess, and um, partly because there's often so much information uh, that isn't relevant to the day-to-day -day function of the employment relationship. Um, however, if you do get a request under the Pri Privacy Act to um, share somebody's folder with them or with their representative, you can simply use this feature now rather than standing at a photocopier and uh, 
printing everything out a hundred times. So now when Maxine logs into self-service, she will also see the signed policies. And we will check that out a bit later to confirm that it worked. The last one on the general overview is our calendar. Calendar will be enabled when you enable lead, and you will see that the calendar captures, again, when the screen captures up, We go. The calendar covers um, key reminders. So if we hover over this one here on Sunday, uh, it's reminding us that Donnell Star's 90 day trial period ends in 30 days. Let's just wait for that hover over to appear on YouTube so you can all see that. There we go. And as we move along, there are any number of other reminders in relation to trial periods, end of fixed term agreements, those sorts of things. You'll also see the green bars. Now these show where people are on leave. So it is showing you that for this week, from Monday the 23rd to Friday the 27th, two people are on leave, Ashley King and Bob Boffin. It also shows that on the 15th of May, there is still this pending and outstanding leave request for Billy Beans. So the calendar at the moment, to answer any um, questions around what can go in it and how customizable is it. At the moment, this is fed from your actions in the software. Um, it's not a completely free text area where you can add any, anything in. The intention in terms of future development is to sync this to Google Calendar and other calendar apps out there so it can communicate. Um, we just need to be careful around that that we sync the right information. Therefore, you know, we want to avoid confidential information going into the, um, into the public domain. Right, let's move on quickly and get into performance reviews. What I'd like to speak about first of all, uh, for those of you looking at running, again, I'm just waiting for our public screen software to catch up. It's getting there. Okay, so performance reviews. Initially, I'd like to just give you a rundown, I guess, of best practice performance reviews from our perspective, so you understand the type of support you will get from MyHR in relation to performance reviews. And again, this is a, a reiteration of that key point of difference that we offer you, and that is that hands-on consultancy and advisory support that is linked with our software, that is a key and fundamental part of our offer. So we can help you establish your performance reviews. The system is the engine that will drive them. And for those of you that are uh, HR nerds like me, you may have read last year uh, a bunch of articles around the death of the performance review. Um, now, having worked in corporates for a number of years before doing my HR and having observed performance reviews done badly in large organisations, my view of that is that most of those articles were written by uh, large corporates and the death of the performance review in corporations of sort of thousand people plus was more like murder. They just behaved or treated the performance review like such a heavily bureaucratic exercise. Um, they were just awful. Um, performance reviews, in my view, are not dying and should not die. They are an amazing tool to actually get the best out of your people. But fundamentally, a performance review is a conversation between two people, between the employer or the manager and the person, and it is designed for mutually beneficial outcomes. Rewarding the successes, dealing with the issues. They are extremely powerful. Where they fall over is when they become so bureaucratic that, they, that the uh, process focuses on the paperwork, not the actual conversation and the performance. So here are some tips around setting up good performance reviews and from a best practice point of view. Firstly, have a clear purpose. What outcome do you want? So we often see clients who will leap in and just establish reviews, set KPIs or objectives and say, yes, this is it. We're gonna triple sales and 200% growth uh, this year, without really considering the impact of that, whether or not it's in fact achievable, whether or not the business is geared up to deal with that type of growth and all of those things. So focus on your end point and work backwards to today. Communicate, speak to your people often. So just because you have a regular and formal review cycle established, doesn't mean you limit your communication to that cycle. When an issue arises today, deal with it today. 
But the next point around structured feedback is do have those regular check-ins. And at those regular structured performance check-ins during the performance cycle, you can go back to the issues that you maybe dealt with on a day. And that's where in, in our system those smart notes can be quite handy. Um, support and develop your people. The best always train. And whether you like uh, to use sporting analogies or artistic analogies, if you make the All Blacks or if you're the lead cellist of the Auckland or the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra, um, that's not the point where you've reached your pinnacle and you just park up and eat hot dogs and chill out and watch TV, right? These people train all the time, every day, every week. The same goes for your people. There's no point at which they stop learning. And so a good performance review incorporates that ongoing development. And the last point there around is around reward and recognise. And that's both informal and formal praise, whether it's formal in the way of bonuses, pay increases and, or other benefits. Informal is everything from a thank you to a movie pass to a, a presentation of a certificate. But it all begins to that last point there with a good review framework. So let's move quickly into, and while we wait for the uh, screen to catch up, I can answer some of these questions. This is quite handy actually, YouTube's helping. So Christina, to answer your question, is it possible to use this software for multiple business entities? Uh, the answer is yes, it is. And there's a, there are a number of ways that this uh, can work, and we work with a number of consultants who do this. And they, um, they provide a sort of overview service to their uh, clients, log into our software and review and can see all of the files and the actions or participate in those actions. Um, so we couple with advisors and consultants quite well. Um, one thing that we are currently developing to make this even easier is what we call a, a super user login. And that would allow you, Christina, as a consultant, to log into my HR and have a drop down list of your clients and then you can see each of their individual uh, areas. Meanwhile, those clients, when they log in, of course, they only see themselves. Um, so that feature will be built shortly. Okay, back to reviews. So the MyHR review, our framework is simple and it's designed to be simple to focus again on this conversation. There are three parts to a MyHR performance review. The first is the objectives, what you need to do to be successful in the job. Third are the skills, those skills and competencies that you need to ensure you can meet your objectives and be successful in your job. And the third is the development plan. So what training and development will you undertake or will the company support you in to help you improve those skills so you can meet those objectives and be successful in your job? So all three parts are linked. Uh, we like to avoid those arbitrary measures, development plans that have training in them that is uh, designed simply to spend a training budget and not necessarily um, achieve value linked to the job. The setting of objectives. This is an old, old acronym, but it is uh, absolutely gold when it comes to setting objectives. Make them smart, please. And I'm sure most of you know what that means, but it is worth a review. So that is a specific objective that, that is measurable and achievable is relevant and is time bound. So specific is really focusing on what it is aimed to achieve. So grow sales is not specific. Increase sales by 10% every month uh, compared to the previous month is getting specific. Measurable, it must be in some way measurable. So grow sales, yeah, we could probably measure that, but by how much, over what time frame? So measurable really is set, it sets those parameters against which you will be measuring performance. Achievable is really important. So it's all very well to say you want to triple the size of the business in the next six months, and that's great, and that's an exciting and a lofty goal, and that may be possible in some industries, um, but in many, that's just simply unattainable. So if you set a goal that cannot be achieved, your people aren't even going to bother trying. Relevant, this one's really important. It's amazing how often we see KPIs that are just not relevant to the person's job, or that the person actually has no control over. And so when you get to your performance discussion, you're discussing, say, an underachievement in an objective, and the person just feels like they're completely um, unable to do anything about it. This is out of my control, the reasons this didn't work. And then it's, a, it's an awkward conversation to have. Uh, and the last one's time bound. Uh, they don't run in perpetuity. You have a review cycle, so link them in some way to key points in that cycle. So that is our advice and how we run our reviews. Let's now quickly switch over to the software and we will set up a performance review for you.
always the lag, hey folks? Um, feel free to pass uh, through any other questions you have while we are waiting for Richard to catch up. What we're going to do here is set a performance review for this employee, uh, Maxine Mills, who we looked at earlier. There we go, back to the launch pad. So you can use another tip for you, you probably are aware, but if not, there's that search function on the right. Um, I like to use that, so it saves you having to jump all the way through multiple tabs. Maxine Mills, account director in the search tab, we go straight to Maxine's file. This is how Maxine looks. We're displaying her leave balance. We'll have a look at leave in a moment. What we want to do is click this tab here that says performance and we're going to commence and conclude pretty quickly a performance review. So our system allows you to establish a performance review um, based on historical KPIs. And the reason we do this is you may be joining MyHR or just introducing the MyHR review system partway through a performance year. So it allows you to retrospectively load your goals. Um, in the case of Maxine here, we're going to set goals for a future time period. Period starts today, 25th of May, and it's going to end a year from now. We are going to set a reminder that is two months before the end of the review and for every two weeks. So let's be clear on this reminder. This is about the end of the review cycle. This is not related to your regular check-in cycle. And that's a nice segue to the other question in there from Rachel at Pacific Discovery around what is best practice for regular check-ins. And I've got a, a view on that and I can help you with that, Rachel, and I think that might be useful for others. And that is simply you should align it to a business cycle that has meaning. So that could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be quarterly, it could be twice yearly. And it really depends on what that meaningful business cycle is. So, for example, what do I mean? The, uh, a fast-moving sales industry, let's say a sort of retail FMCG type um, uh, in business where you are selling sellotape to um, stationary stores and you've got allocations in a box and every, every, every week you have to get through a certain number. A weekly meeting is vital. What did you sell last week? What are we going to sell this week? How can we get more? Equally though, if you're in a business, say professional services and things take a bit longer and you might be engaged in a project that has a 12 to 24 week lead time, um, catching up weekly can be a bit meaningless. And if you set up a weekly catch up and there's nothing to talk about, very quickly that meeting will just disappear from the calendar. So if it's too frequent, then there is not much to talk about and they fall over. Equally, the reverse applies. If it's too infrequent, so you catch up once a year, um, yet this is fast moving business where things happen on a weekly and daily basis, it becomes very difficult to manage or discuss issues that occurred 50 weeks ago uh, when you're only sitting down to talk about it now. So the regular check-in cycle should align to a meaningful business cycle. So now we're going to add some objectives for Maxine. This is the steps of our performance review. Um, you can add objectives by typing in free text. So we're going to keep this quick. So we'll say um, a specific project might be clear the X product from warehouse by July. So this is a clearing of a backlog of product. They may have some boxes of stuff that they want Maxine to sell. So the free text objectives really allow you to put anything you like in there. Um, this is specific. So when we talk about smart objectives, it doesn't mean it have to be long. So it's quite specific around what we need to achieve when we need to achieve a buy. And we're assuming that it is achievable and, uh, and that it is relevant, that Maxine is the person to sell this product and that the product that we are talking about is uh, you know, not 20 years supply, that it is something she can ship in the next two months. We also have a KPI database. And so this allows you to choose objectives that uh, will help you get going if you struggle to write objectives. So we click that, add objective search. I'm just going to hit the letter A because that'll open a whole bunch of them. And you can see KPIs appearing. And so we are going to add three. So we've selected three KPIs. 
scroll to the bottom and click or objectives, sorry, terminology, goals, objectives, KPIs. So these are the three. I'm away again for the screen to catch up. These are the three that we have chosen. And as you can see, they require completion by you. So in this case, achieve X percent sales growth over which period. So let's say we're going to ask Maxine to do 15% growth in sales for the financial year. Compared to the previous financial year. It's entirely editable. So these are really just designed to start. Uh, to, to get you going. Complete how many? 100 cold calls in each month throughout the year. Complete X project, so this might relate to a project. Complete CRM project on time and within budget by we want this done part way through the performance year. We're going to say September. And now we have established four KPIs or objectives, sorry, for uh, a Maxine. We move to that area of skills, and the same applies. So I'll speed this up. We will just select the top three and add them. Once again, the same applies. You can use our skills and competencies that we have defined. You can edit those if you wish to, or you can add your own in free text. And then there is the personal development plan. And once again, you can add your own, read a book. You can find who is responsible. Is it magazine or is it the manager? We also have a database. The one thing I will say about development plans, again, just as some advice around best practice. Uh, development plans don't always have to relate to a training course. So, for example, you may put somebody into a role um, where they're covering for someone who's on leave, and that might be their manager, and they get exposure then to, um, to that job. So Maxine's goals have been set. We submit those. The review has been generated, uh, and Maxine has been notified. We log into Maxine's self serve. Wait for the uh, screen to catch up. This is what Maxine sees as an employee employment agreements, and there's that signed policies folder we shared with her earlier. Now here is the performance review we've just set up. So she has visibility of that and she can work to that throughout the year. Now once again, please make sure that a conversation has been held at this point so Maxine is aware of what these are. This is not the uh, system working in isolation. So we are now in progress. We're doing, uh, a, there is a performance review, sorry, in place for the year. Uh, here is the overview of Maxine in her self-serve while we're in there. Maxine can also see the calendar. But you'll notice that the calendar does not share all of those notifications with Maxine. So she is not and should not necessarily be aware of other people's details around the commencement or the conclusion of a trial period, uh, the progress of a fixed term agreement. She can see, however, that other staff are on leave during this week, but it doesn't show the names of those staff. So at least when she's making a leave application, she can see that there are five other people on leave in this week. Uh, she may not apply for leave. She might wait for the next week. So the review is established. Let's now conclude it really quickly. Hope you're all still with me. And we're just moving back across now to the um, to the client space. So this is Guy Smiley getting back into Guy's DIY. Okay, and while we're waiting, um, Mandy's question. If we've already set up performance review templates, 
can we, your impression's gone off the side of the screen for some reason, Mandy, excuse me while I adjust the line. See that? If we have already set up forms for your templates, can we delete them or edit them? Uh, you can conclude them. So yes, you can. Uh, so if you want to make changes throughout the year or stop it altogether, you can. So let's have a look at that, shall we? will go to uh, Maxine's performance review. Wait for the screen to catch up again. Liz, your question. Do you recommend regular check-ins as ongoing or just for the first year of employment? Um, Liz, I'd recommend them ongoing. But again, go back to my point around um, making sure that they are meaningful. You know, that regular check-in might be a month to catch up. Uh, and I, look, I think there's value in always connecting to your people. Um, it's amazing how many issues that we encounter that can be very easily solved if there was just better communication and a better understanding of what was going on in a uh, in a person's life or in relation to their job, so I think I think check-ins are important. I would encourage you to do them regularly. So here we are now with the um, performance review. You can add a check-in reminder here. So throughout the year, we want to catch up monthly, every three months, every six months. Um, interestingly, weekly is not there, but it it is normally. So we're going to set a monthly reminder and we're going to check in every month. Uh, here we go, Mandy, to answer your question. Edit goals in cycle. You click this and you can make changes to the goals. So why may you want to do that? Well, it may be, for example, this objective here that says uh, clear X product from the warehouse by July. Uh, well, it may be that you've actually gone in there and found out that it's all damaged and it can't be solved, it has to just be discarded. And so there is no way that Maxine will be able to achieve this uh, objective, so it is legitimately removed. Of course, you want to make sure you're not just constantly adjusting objectives uh, to, I guess, soften the impact of performance and performance management. As you check in, you can add check-in notes. What we're going to do, because time is getting short, sorry folks, I like to talk, but it's a bit weird when I'm not in a room full of people um, firing questions at me. Complete cycle. This is reminding us here that we will end at the review period early. Do you wish to continue? I'm going to say yes, we do. And I'm waiting for the screen to catch up. In this particular part of ending the review, is the manager conducting their assessment based on whatever objective data or information they have of Maxine's performance? This piece is happening in isolation at the moment. This is not the conversation with the employee just yet. So the manager might be saying, okay, well, we don't think Maxine has had the best year. And in fact, we don't think the skills are necessarily up to standard. So we're doing some low ratings here. And YouTube will start populating it soon, I'm sure. Go, two, three, one, two. We get to the development plan. Um, she did not achieve the, or complete the development activities. And then we get on to the notes. List three things that went well during the period. And now here is where your smart notes become extremely handy. So there is a little link at the bottom that says populate from notes. And this relates to only the notes that are listed and are a positive. No notes matching the search. Okay, so that is because um, the, the notes that we've written are in a, an alternative performance period uh, for, for Mandy, but, or Maxine, sorry. Maxine has a bunch of notes in her file, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and then you can populate directly from your notes into, uh, into this. It's incredibly handy and it saves you a lot of time, particularly if you can't remember necessarily what happened a year ago. Um, but these are also free text. So you can simply type information in here uh, about three things that went well. You can add other fields or you can remove it. And equally with three things that did not go so well. And then additional comments and submit. Now, the manager has completed his rating of Maxine. Maxine receives a note saying, hey Maxine, your performance review uh, is ready uh, for you to complete your self-assessment. So Maxine logs into self-serve 
And again, in isolation, this is this moment before the meeting where the employee rates themselves. And the reason we encourage this is that it allows an initial assessment to take place uh, based really on kind of pure objective thinking. Once you're in the room, there's always a bit of a power imbalance between the manager and the employee. And uh, depending on the type of personality you're dealing with, there are employees who are naturally, or people generally, who are naturally um, uh, default to a more subservient, people-pleasing type approach. And so we'll just nod and say yes, whether or not they agree is another thing. And there are others who are naturally more prone to just uh, push back and challenge and fight and argue. So what we want is to actually have an objective initial assessment. So Maxine is now going to assess her own performance. And as you can see, she doesn't have visibility of what the manager has assessed. Maxine is rating herself very, very well. She thinks she's had a fantastic year, has achieved everything. She's writing uh, great notes about what she's done. And there's only one thing that she thinks didn't go so well. So as you'll see when it gets to the notes, Maxine can't draw from the file notes that relate to her because those are viewed only by the manager. When Maxine concludes her self-assessment, she submits it, and Guy Smiley at Guy's DIY receives a note saying Maxine is ready to go. What we want you to do now is have a meeting with your people. This is really where, with your person, this is where it really comes to life. This is the whole point of this performance review, the discussion. So we'll let the screen catch up because I will show you what Guy Smiley now sees. And we recommend you have this on screen in a meeting or on an iPad. You can print it if you want, we have a print function. And so there it is, the red is Guy Smiley, the green is Maxine, and you can see how they have assessed each other. So Maxine has rated herself a five in relation to clearing the product from the warehouse by July. Guy rated her a two. So there's clearly a difference of opinion there. And this is the value of the discussion. Why does Maxine think she did so well? Why does Guy think she did it? Uh, is the product still in the warehouse? Was it clear? That sort of thing. So the discussion occurs. This is the, this is the key. And then an agreement is reached or the manager decides ultimately what the final rating may be. And so you can see the comparison of the employee and manager ratings all the way down. And we're just going to quickly finish those. This is the part that really, for me, um, has the most value in terms of taking your performance reviews with your people and making them a living part of your business. So these are the things that went well during the period. The green are the comments made by um, Maxine, and the red are the comments made by Guy Smiley. So we're going to look at these things, these positives. You may decide to keep them. You may decide that there's some double up, and so you're going to remove a couple. But most importantly, the next piece of the conversation, identify how we can do these things more often. Or identify how we can do things well more often, sorry, I should read. Um, and that is really now a proactive discussion. So Maxine, what did you do well in the last year? And well, actually we've identified that there is an entire market in, I don't know, pick an industry, architecture, that need our products. And we had no idea. And I've identified 20 new clients and they've all uh, bought lots and lots of things from us. Fantastic. Well, suddenly we've exposed a new market. We want to make sure our other account managers and directors know this. We want to talk to marketing about how we might make better use of our exposure into this market. A proactive action that's come out of identifying these good things. And so that leads on to actions. Similarly, when you get to the things that did not go so well during this period, you know, wait for the screen to catch up. We're looking at those issues or negatives, and these may be tough issues. They may be problems relating to the person's performance, or they may just be improvement areas, constructive criticism type things. But once again, the conversation here around identify how we can do things differently to avoid these issues. And that is a discussion around, well, what's happened? What is it? What is it that um, is causing these problems to arise? If they relate to individual performance, then it allows you to directly address those issues of individual uh, performance and put plans in place. Um, I, as an HR practitioner, love this sort of conversation because it really 
is geared towards a mutually beneficial outcome. It's much better than running a disciplinary process, uh, in my view. If you can resolve stuff by using and having proactive performance management discussions, you will achieve so much more. Disciplinaries by nature are somewhat combative. The employee has just been given a letter that says, here are all the things we don't really like about you. And you know, I'm, I know I'm being emotive there, but that is how they read it. Therefore, their view is they need to defend fight or flight sort of kicks in and I'm here to defend myself and it becomes far more of an argument. Whereas a performance review discussion is an open and honest discussion about the good and the bad, the improvement measures we can undertake. So we, keep, we make some comments and we give an overall rating of three. We can make any other additional comments and we submit the final review. I'll wait for the screen to catch up and you'll see that that review has now been completed and signed off. So a couple of things to backtrack on. Uh, make sure you use those smart notes. That smart notes feature and populating those notes is, uh, is really useful. I will show you Maxine's notes in a minute. Um, the performance review then takes you, as you can see there, to um, a screen that allows you to kick the next review period off. So you can commence another, yeah, you don't have to do it straight away, but it is there. When you click edit goals, it just repopulates the review with all of the goals and skills uh, from last year. They're all editable, so you may rebuild them all. Or you may actually have a rolling set of objectives. 50% increase in sales may be an ongoing KPI, for example. So if we have a look in Maxine's files uh, area quickly, you'll see the notes that I'm talking about. These notes that we were leaving around Maxine was 20 minutes late today. If we have a look, at when the screen catches up, sorry. So you can see there that all of those notes exist there. Um, you can filter them. So you can click those tags and say, well, actually, we want to deal with this issue of lateness. We believe it's becoming a bit of a problem. And so immediately you can filter those smart notes to review, well, how many times has it occurred? And we have two instances here. Um, we might look at some of the positives. So we might sort by positive and negative. And we look at the positives and we go, well, here's some great stuff about Maxine. This is useful for the performance review. So that is performance review. Um, we are now at 45 minutes, and that is the time that we've sort of set for this. Um, what I will do is check your questions because I did want to cover three. And just make sure we have dealt with all of those while we're on. It looks like we have, which is great. Um, I will quickly go into leave uh, for you. Anybody that has to go, please feel free to make contact. We have our contact details. Once again, to reiterate that key that is the My HR value is we're here. We are humans to support you in your HR management. It's not just the software. So pick up the phone, find us on LinkedIn, drop us an email if you have questions. So if you have to go now, thank you for tuning in. For those that are going to hang around for a few more minutes, I will just show you how Leave works. So Leave in my HR is a scheduling tool. That is the first point I need to make. Um, and the reason um, I say that is we will interface with payrolls eventually. But we are not the payroll provider. Our Leave module helps you manage the flow of your people so you know who is in and who is out, who has applied for Leave and who hasn't. And this has come about from a lot of client feedback. Clients who have said to us that their payroll leave modules are either not that easy to use or that they don't actually like having that self-serve payroll function because they're nervous about the treatment of leave payment. So they want a tool that allows for the booking of leave. So that's what this does. It allows, in this instance, Guy logged in as the manager to say, well, I had a call from Maxine today. Uh, she's not well. She's not going to be in at work. So I can manage my leave as the manager. I want to log some leave for Maxine. It's a day of sick leave. It's the 25th of May, eight hours, which is defaults to Maxine's normal hours of work in her agreement. It can be prorated if she was a part-time employee. It might be four. Uh, in this case, we'll keep it at eight. He can leave a comment. Maxine has a cold. save.
is now applied to Maxine's leave history and her leave is adjusted down by eight hours. She now has 32 hours of sick leave available. I'll let that screen catch up again so you can see what that looks like. So that is the manager logging leave on behalf of the employee following uh, a notification of it. Maxine, of course, can apply for leave. So now we'll go back to employee self-serve. And you can see how this works. What you will get as output, if you want to print it to give to your payroll, is a log of the leave that has been taken. And so you can take those hours of leave and you can convert that then to the relevant payments. Our accrual model works on the basis of hours and actual hours worked. And so for those of you that know a little bit about payroll and some of the complexities of the Holidays Act, um, you, accrue rate, you accrue leave actually at two different rates. The accruing entitlement or the current year is at 8%, uh, but available leave um, is measured as the greater of average weekly or ordinary weekly earnings on the basis of four weeks leave per year. And those two calculations are quite different. We just accrue on the basis of four weeks leave per year based on a number of prorated hours you work. So that allows for very easy scheduling and it means that the employee never sees a leave amount that is in excess of what they should have. The trick is relating that back to payroll, and as I say, we are building our payroll interfaces this year, and uh, they will be in place shortly. So now we're back to Maxine. Let's quickly do this before we wrap. Maxine is going to apply for annual leave. She wants to take time off in June. I'll wait as the screen catches up. Uh, Monday the 13th of June to Friday the 24th of June. Our system accounts for weekends, as you can see, in the case of employees that don't work weekends, like Maxine. Uh, the leave system also caters for public holidays. So if a public holiday fell during that time, it would be shaded out and it would have a zero balance in there, just like those Saturday and Sunday dates. Uh, because the employee is entitled to a public holiday uh, as opposed to an annual leave day, if it was otherwise a working day, that is. So Maxine's going to say, I want go to Bali surfing and save it. The employer now gets a note saying, Maxine's applied for leave, do you approve it? And the employer can approve or decline. So these reminders that we looked at earlier, these all these actions are now popping up in those reminders and sending you email alerts to say, hey, Maxine has applied for leave, log into my HR and do something about it. And there you can see it at the top of the reminder function. Maxine Mills, leave request for 13 June pending approval. Here we go, Maxine Mills, pending approval. Hey Hugh, uh, can I answer your question about the note tags being customizable? Yes, they are. Um, I can show you that in a minute if you like. So you can add various different tags. In fact, let's just do it now. This is nice and easy. Maxine. We want to put a note here uh, that may be Maxine is uh, going to be on tally. So we'll be off work for three months. You know, that's what she's going to do. But we've agreed to give her time off. It's quite unique. There's not actually a tag that fits that. So we're going to add a tag and we're just going to call it uh, TV leave. There you go. And so now you'll see, Hugh and anyone else that's interested, that there is a tag in there that relates specifically to that. So when you build up a catalogue or history of file notes, you want to refer back to any notes that relate to Maxine's TV leave and her time off work because of this uh, television show she was on. Uh, you can filter by that tag very easily. Now back to this leave approval, we click through from the reminder and the screen catches up. Okay. 
And you'll see there, when it gets there, there is a pending request. Two minutes ago, Maxine has requested 80 hours annual leave from the 13th of June to the 24th of June. You can make a comment, you can approve, you can decline, or you can view the calendar to just see if anybody else is off on leave at that same time. So what we're going to do in this instance is approve that leave. There's a comment. Comments are optional. You don't have to make a comment, but have a great trip. Again, I'm a, I'm a fan of these comments because for me, this is part of the communication with your people. It's part of just connecting with folks. You know, we, uh, whether you're communicating through a system like this, whether you're communicating verbally, um, it actually just shows some consideration and a small bit of, uh, a bit of common courtesy. So, um, I'm into you guys just writing stuff like that. I think it's good. I think it's good for people. And now you can see that Maxine's annual leave has been adjusted by those 40 hours once the, uh, once the YouTube screen catches up. Right, so that is leave. There is the total uh, sort of overview that I was promising. Let me go through and have a look at the questions and then wrap. Can annual shutdown be specified here by a manager? Um, yes, it can. You, the annual shutdowns, though, are quite specific. So there's a number of things that we uh, talk about in relation to that. Firstly, we want to make sure that you have a clause in your employment agreement that relates to the annual shutdown. Um, second of all, we want to make sure that your process of uh, enabling your shutdown is robust so that you are giving at least 14 days notice. We like and recommend that you give that notice in writing. Uh, it's not a legal requirement to do so, but we think it's best practice. It's just that letter that says, hey, we have an annual shutdown. This is when it is. This is how your leave is treated for this shutdown. If you have any questions, let us know. Again, it's about open, honest, transparent communication. So it can be included, um, but it's often tailored to uh, specifics of each client. Um, shutdowns, of course, can also relate to um, parts of your workforce. So you might shut, say, a manufacturing facility down, but the customer service team may stay working right through the shutdown period or vice versa. So communications and things around that are, are customisable but tailored to each client. Uh, Justine's question there about, hi Jason, can negative leave balances be managed in my HR? Yes, they can. So let's say in the example that you're looking at on screen now with Maxine, Maxine's applied for uh, maybe four weeks off. She needs to go to Europe for a wedding or something. Uh, and you've decided that you want to grant that. That annual leave will be adjusted to reflect those four weeks at 40 hours a week. That's 160 hours. It would show negative 80. And that will slowly accrue back to zero. The nice thing about that is that you can then track that against, um, you know, what she owes you and make sure that she, in the first instance, achieves back to that negative zero balance, or that if she doesn't and then leaves your employment, you are able to recover the money uh, that you advanced her in leave. And I think that's it for all the questions, folks. And we are almost at one hour. So thank you so much for attending the first MyHR webinar. This has been a learning for all of us. I think there's some things that we can do better next time around screen delays and what have you. But um, I'm very keen to hear your feedback. Feel free to chuck it up uh, anywhere, our Facebook page. Email me directly. Give me a phone call. You know we like to hear from you all. Um, stay in touch. We'll, uh, we will certainly be having another one of these. And as we roll out new features, we will be sure to share them with you. I would also encourage you to get onto our uh, website and subscribe to the blogs and the resources section. We like to give away free stuff. And resources is an area where you will see a whole bunch of cool things that uh, you might be able to use. Guides to CV screening, interview questions, dismissal process, restructure process. So they can be quite handy and you can share them with anybody. Um, of course, if you're a MyHR client, you get all this stuff and much more as part of the service. So once again, thank you all so much. Have a great day and uh, I look forward to talking to you soon.